yes, yes. Happy Snowy Tuesday. There are two words that should scare the crap out of us, and it's not stelter nudes. <laughs> nope, it's President Harris. During an interview with the Wall Street Journal, the Veep said she's ready to step in as commander in chief. Quote, I am ready to serve. There's no question about that. Serve what, you ask? If it's anything more than a tennis ball, trust me, she'd be over her head. Of course, she means she's ready should something happen to the current president. Now, she also claims that everyone who sees her on the job, quote, walks away fully aware of my capacity to lead. No, they don't walk away. They run. <laughs> In the first two years, more than 13 high-profile aides have left the VP's office, and that's through an open window. <laughs> now, it's worth pointing out that Kamala gave that answer before the Her report. It's one thing she actually saw coming besides Willie Brown. No, he was always sneaking up on her. People are minds in the gutter. So she was worried about Joe's fitness for office even before last week's disaster. But she feels like she needs to reassure us, as if the thought of Kamala in charge is reassuring. Her Venn diagram hits that sweet spot between useless, clueless, and brainless. When Joe appointed her border czar, she got nervous because she never saw a C and a Z next to each other like that. But remember, for the longest time, we weren't supposed to criticize her for the same reason Biden picked her as VP. She checked more boxes than a grave robber. Ah. <laughs> she ca so call her out on her incompetence. You're racist and sexist. But now the Dems in the media are jumping ship. So now they're just as racist and sexist as the rest of us. Boo-hoo. According to the latest Real Clear Politics Average, Kamala has a net favorable rating of minus 19.2%, and her unfavorable rating is 54.7, placing her somewhere between an IRS audit and chlamydia. Jesus. That's compared to Joe's net favorable rating of minus 15.3, which is also his body temperature. So people like her less than Biden. And yet, I can think of a few people who do want her to be president, and they all work on this show. <laughs> just imagine how easy and fun it would be to have President Kamala Harris. We could just play tape of her talking, and we don't have to do anything. And that laugh, we wouldn't even need a studio audience. <laughs> like, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, I want to give you. I want to give you the opportunity. I thought we were supposed to conserve things. <laughs> I couldn't reconcile it. Now I can. <laughs> you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> Every time I see that, I'm waiting for two guys in white lab coats to throw a giant butterfly net over her and lead her back into the van. But the fact is, I know what's good for the show, but it can also be bad for the country. So I got to put the country before my ratings. That's why we stopped booking Taylor Swift. <laughs> Now, you'd think the White House would do whatever they could to counter this argument, but on Monday, they confirmed Biden won't take a cognitive test as part of his upcoming physical exam, while repeating the same jargon about how he's super on top of things. Does the White House think that the, the idea of the president taking a cognition test, a cognitive test, as a part of this uh, physical is a legitimate idea? The president proves every day how he operates how he thinks. He is sharp. Uh, he is on top of things. He, when we have uh, meetings with him, with his staff, he's constantly pushing us, getting, trying to get more information. Mm, well, he is sharp and on top of things, but so was a guillotine. <laughs> so the White House and Biden allies keep telling us he's fit, smart, articulate. Instead, all we get is things like this, where the leader of the free world doesn't know where to stand. Mr. President, uh, thank you. That guy speaking was the king of Jordan, but to Joe, it might as well have been this king. <laughs> now, if you're Biden's staff, you'd think they just put some tape on the ground so he knows where to go. We do that for Steve Ducey every morning. But it's like Biden's staff doesn't even care anymore. Otherwise, how do you explain this? 
a new nine-minute video on Biden's YouTube channel where he's eating fried chicken and talking about basketball with a black family. Oh, boy. Well, at least he didn't bring a watermelon. <laughs> but at this point, they're just letting him go. <laughs> Those in control must already have a post-Joe plan, or they wouldn't let their guy do stuff like that. You see Joe eating fried chicken and talking basketball with blacks, and you think, hmm, that looks racist. The Dems see it and think, no, it's his last meal. It's what he wanted. <laughs> now, the liberal politico just explained the specifics of the Democrats' plan B for Joe Biden. There's all sorts of boring procedural stuff. But the short version is, if it does happen, Biden will need to fully cooperate. He needs to be on board. It can't happen without him. You know, unless he gets in incapacitated. But how could that ever happen, right? I mean, he might fall or get pushed. <laughs> he might die in his sleep with the help of a pillow. <laughs> but think about this. If the Dems hadn't changed the rules in 2020 or ran on a race-hoaxing, demonizing platform or suppressed that laptop, Trump would have won. Then there never would have been a Biden presidency, no Kamala, no war in Ukraine, perhaps a calmer Middle East. And imagine the better place that the Dems would be in now. They'd have Democrat candidates that aren't frail or idiotic. They'd be able to run on eight years of Trump and could blame everything on him, real or mostly imagined. But instead, they took the low road to victory. They demonized millions. They ran on hoaxes and changed laws. So now they're here. A choice between a brain-dead crook and a cackling chuckle bucket. <laughs> like I always say, karma is a Liz Cheney. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's been called a rising comedy star by the popular website, definitely not Joe DeVito's personal blog.org. Writer and comedian Joe DeVito. <laughs> She puts the Jew in. Did you see that hot lady on the show last night? <laughs> Human rights lawyer, Brooke Goldstein. <laughs> She's perky, lurky, and thin like beef jerky. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Cat Time. <laughs> He's large, in charge, and wears a double extra large. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA world champion, Tyrus. <laughs> You know, it wouldn't be fair doing a, a monologue on Kamala without having her, you know, have a chance to respond. So I think we actually have tape of her responding. I am ready to become president. I won't let what is stop me from what can be. Because what can be isn't not what it should be becoming. It's that simple. <laughs> Joe Biden is running for president. But there was once a little girl waiting for a school bus. And that school bus was me. <laughs> Let's really build back better and make America great again. <laughs> Joe, what do you make of this? I think this is the first time a president won't take a cognitive exam oh. since it was first introduced during the uh, Middle Ages. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is bad because it's not going to get better. This is not the movie Cocoon. No. Where he's going to recover from this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think when they have the tape that they have from the stand, they've got to use that double-sided tape mm. so that when he steps onto it, he's trapped there and he yes. can't wander off. You like those glue traps I have for mice. <laughs> exactly. It's either that or they leave him in place and they just move everything else around. <laughs> like he's, a, he's the first president who's going to move less than the Disney Hall of Presidents exhibit when it's <laughs> yes. his turn. But there are things to be excited about a Kamala presidency. Uh, number one, uh, she does not have dementia. And we can, we can end it right there. Right. That's better. <laughs> yeah. But she doesn't sniff children. Yeah. Uh, she does not have oil cancer. Mm-hmm. And she would be awake for not just the 3 a.m. call, but also the 3 p.m. call. That's important. Which Joe was napping usually during this. <laughs> yes. Brooke, okay. Do you think Kamala would be any better than Joe? Or is America simply screwed if the Democrats win? Um, yeah, I think so. I think we're totally screwed. We're screwed as it is right now. I just don't 
comprehend how if you turn 70 and you want your driver's license to be renewed in Washington, D.C., you have to get a letter from your doctor declaring that you are medically capable of driving. So how is it not a legal obligation mm -hmm. to take this cognitive test? And even if he did, they'd probably lie about it anyway. But, right. you know, in the meantime, I think it's important to know that the vice president is, is traveling across the country right now on her pro-abortion tour, mm -hmm. telling everyone how she's such a a women's rights activist since high school when she let her best friend sleep over because she was being sexually harassed by her stepfather. And on the other hand, she's going around in the same breath telling everybody how smart she is. And, it, you know, it's one of those things where if you have to declare it over and over again, mm -hmm. it's not it, right? Yeah. It's not the case. It's, it's, people know if you're smart or not, right? <laughs> yeah. I didn't really sound so smart today. No, you I, do, you do, you do. <laughs> Kat, how you doing? I'm okay. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, as a woman, and you are a woman. Yeah. And congratulations. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, they applaud they you. Yeah, they yeah. Are. yeah. Uh, will Kamala becoming president, the first female president, will that bring you tears of joy? No. No? <laughs> no, it won't. Um, I think that she is an inspiration in some ways, but it's just because, like, not because she's so great, but because she's not, and she's still been able to achieve quite a bit. Yes. I think that that's a little bit inspirational. But the bar is so low when we are, in fact, arguing over a cognitive test. Yeah. <laughs> From what I understand, those aren't supposed to be hard. <laughs> that's not like Jeopardy. That's yeah. like, are you there in there, right? <laughs> and I think that they're actually twisting it a little bit in his favor. I don't think Biden refused the cognitive test. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was offered one. Right. I don't think he is actually there enough to know that he should re refuse a cognitive test at this point. Mm -hmm. And again, we're all just acting like it's normal and it's clearly not, but I, we don't, at the end of the day, we don't really need it. We see, we see, we yeah. see that he wouldn't pass it. We're not like, why won't you take one? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Tyrus, is this just like choosing which way to die? Yeah, you, you did. Yeah. Watermelon or chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I was projecting his racism. Right, yes, yes. Well played. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I love everyone to have jobs, mm -hmm. but we will never, ever, ever use a Kamala impersonator again. There is no reason. <laughs> there is absolutely no reason yes. to impersonate, because she gives us gold every time she goes out. Mm -hmm. To impersonate her is insulting yeah. to the fans who want a good laugh. <laughs> that, she that literally did a speech from The Godfather. Yeah. I'm smart. <laughs> I like things. <laughs> I could be in charge. That's what we want to see. Yeah. And it's all done. You can hear the wine pour in the back, <laughs> squeezing the three or four drops left in that red wine box yes. to get her through the other thing. And Biden, he doesn't have to take a cognitive test. He just <laughs> failed one mm -hmm. during an investigation yeah. where his charge would have been a fine, probably probation, maybe, mm -hmm. if he would have been cognitive to stand trial. But the interview with the special counsel said he can't, he's not cognitive enough to stay in trial. So there's no point to take a test. He just took one. They have the transcripts. I'm sure we'll see it soon. Yeah. But why would you have him take a test? He failed it miserably once mm -hmm. on the oral exam. Now you want him to write <laughs> down? <laughs> that, that was the scariest part to me that when they came out with that and they said, oh, he's an elderly man, he's well-meaning. But he, he has memory issues. And when I read that, I thought the next line was going to be, so he can't be president anymore. <laughs> but they were like, no, nah, it's okay if he's in charge of the nukes. Yeah. We'll just have someone guide his finger if we yeah. need yeah. to. He like, just eh, can't be to... held accountable for anything. Because usually when racket. someone says he's a nice man and his memory's gone, therefore we're accepting him in the home. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the next move is the home. Yeah. Will we have a president in the home? Yeah, that would be a first. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.